So if you take that and see, okay, it is an interest of theirs, they always want to be on TV. I've seen that. <laughs> Wherever we've gone, even in Africa, you switch on a camera, all of them, <laughs> we want to be on TV. There's a hook. Give them an idea. You will produce the show. You're working with a, with a serious idea right there. Some of the kids um, realize that there is poverty. That's a good thing. They realize that they need to get out of that. That's a good thing. It's even a better thing when they say, we are going to go make something of ourselves and come back and help our families. Nobody can touch that because now you're dealing with um, youth who've got open minds. They're questioning, well, some of some younger people or rather some older people in their youth didn't question because that was just culture and some listen this is how it is and that's what it is so it, it, it was wonderful to see this 21 year old he told me about the history of Heli Selassie uh, men like who came before him and the churches that are around what they mean what happens in different seasons in Ethiopia I'm like I'm 28 and I couldn't even tell you that about South Africa man I'm well, I, I, I recently started doing um, a little family documentary. That's a start. But at 21, he, he's telling me the history of the country of Ethiopia. That is wonderful. If, if, you, if you can create that kind of interest with young people and they can connect the two between um, the ideals of the Western, because not all Western ideals are bad. I don't believe so. You know, there's something good that you can take away from that and then join it with the culture and the ideals of Africa where we come from. You got a winning formula there. I've just been blown away by the people of Ethiopia, the young people, where yes, there's, there's a few that have been influenced by the cultures of hip hop or pop or whatever to, uh, the Western world brings. Um, but on the majority that I've seen, the young people are proud that Rastas are coming to their country and looking at it as the holy land and therefore finding reason to say Ethiopia is great because this is who lived here, this is the culture, this is uh, the things that we're known for, irrespective of um, the money not being here. Look, infrastructure here is not the greatest, but they have found pride in being Ethiopian. And if you can just switch that on, you know, you've got, you've got something there for African youth. You've got something that you can work with in, in the world. So people need to go back and find out. Have interest in that. I think that, that there's a story, I mean, to say, whoa, you know, there's science. There's uh, what you'd call natural science, if there's such a term. We'll make that one up now. But there's something that actually uh, worked at a time when what we're using now wasn't there. When cell phones weren't there, when motors weren't there, when we weren't using oil to make petrol and therefore uh, uh, use the mechanics of a car to travel or a plane. You know what I mean? So finding those things out, I've found that uh, they're interesting and there has to be a way that we can put it out there and the youth can find it interesting to actually go out there and, and find out about. Um, the downside to giving a young person, any young person, just a camera to go and record a history is that they'll go to their parents and their parents don't even know that history. So there's the danger. Need to find where is it they need to go and look for the history so that they have direction. Whereas you want them to document something that can be used um, for their lives and also for the world to see on some, okay, look, this is what happens in Gambia, this is what happens in Tanzania because a youth documented it from their interest and therefore they grow with that. And that's what they can hold as their gold, better than the mineral.